Okay, welcome to 3.3 is simplifying radicals. So learning target three. Uh, so what we're actually doing here is um, simplifying and performing operations on mixed and entire radicals. Uh, we call a radical any kind of square root. So we just start with this question here. Um, be my guest to actually write this in yourself. Uh, we're just going to walk through it though, um, just to kind of to to kind of get get the idea of going. And I'll, I'll kind of rationalize why we're doing this. Um, so I'll let you guys know. So if we look at this, um, root 25 times 4 is actually just 5 times 2, which is 10. Root 25 times 4 is 100. 100 root of 100 is 10. Square root of 16 is 4 times the square root of 9 is 3. Square root of uh, 16 times 9, which is 144, is 12. Uh, root 4 times root 36 is, t is 2 times 6. If we multiply 4 by 36, we actually get 144 again, so it's, again it's 12. Square root of 100 is 10 times 3, which is 30. And square root of 900 is 30 as well. So actually this gives us a way to, um, to you're going to see in the lesson that, that this gives us a way to simplify um, numbers. You can Technically you could take square roots this way. Um, to get an idea of what of um, what exactly you have, if you if 900 is too big, you can think of that as the square root of 100 times the square root of 9. That's a really helpful way. That's exactly what we're going to use it for too. Um, so a radical is a, a square cube or higher root. The square root is the radical symbol. Uh, root a times root b, like we saw in the investigation, equals the square root of a times b. Um, explained in class, like this is really what we've um, what we've seen before um, with with exponents. Um, and so when we talk about exponents, we'll, we'll explore this later. But the radical is actually just the square. The square root is actually just a exponent of zero point five. And so like you can do this with quadratics. Like if you had the square root of a or a, a plus b or a times b squared. You could square a and square b. Like if you had uh, x y squared is x squared y squared, um, and this is it's really just a property of a, of an exponent. A uh, square root is an exponent. Uh, it doesn't have to be a square root. You could have a cube root. Um, so you just have a three outside here or anything higher. Uh, and what we're going to practice today is actually just breaking these things down. Uh, so mixed radical is a radical with coefficient. And so if you're asked to, like, to put it in mixed radical form, uh, we also call this exact values. Uh, it's, it's just writing something as an exact number. The reason for this, like you might be wondering, like why don't I just type the square root of 72 in my calculator and get a number? Um, the issue with that is like I always say it's my same like um, argument towards fractions. As mathematicians, and like if you're taking grade 11 university math, um, that's like the the road that the engineers go through to become to to deal with this stuff, um, and like or the mathematicians go through. But mathematicians create models. They they solve problems. They they create equations. They they create answers to those equations to help solve those problems. If you had something like the square root of seventy two. Um, well, like it, it's it's always helpful to write that as in its more simple form. Um, if I did take the square root of seventy-two, I'm actually getting a decimal number, and if I round that to two decimal places, three decimal places, nine decimal places, I'm still rounding it. Um, if I have to take that number and multiply it by a billion, if I have to take that number and multiply it through a problem, like through through numbers consistently. Uh, that that's always going to be problematic because I'll always be rounding it. Your calculator might go to nine decimal places, but like it's still rounding. Um, and so, just like fractions, we actually want to keep things in as exact forms as possible. And so, with the square root of seventy-two, it it'd be nice to be able to do operations on it without rounding it. Uh, so, square root of seventy-two we saw could actually be broken down as thirty-six times two. Um, you were broken down as 8 times 9 as well, but the problem with 8 times 9 is 8 would have to be broken down farther. The square root of 36 times the square root of 2, uh, which is 6 root 2. What this en enables us to do is if we had root 72 in a problem, we could take now 6 root 2 
We could take other root twos and add them to it. Uh, we can combine like terms. 27, um, sorry, that's called a, a radical with a coefficient. That's m a, a mixed radical, a radical with a coefficient. We have a mixed radical in the second one, but it's not in simplest form. Um, 27 can be broken down as 9 and 3. Um, 9 can actually be broken down as 3. And then we're multiplying by 5, so we can put the 3 with the 5 and multiply and say we've got 15. Um, if we have 3 root 3s is what 27 is, if we've got 5 of those, we actually have 15 root 3s. And so we just really multiply the numbers together. And again, 5 root 27s can be combined with any number of root 3s. Uh, and, and we really just use like terms um, in algebra. And we're not rounding. Uh, we give the scientist, the businessman, the, the engineer, however decimal places they want because like we have something in exact values. Uh, root 8 plus root 50 is an example of like using two radicals, putting them together, um, because if you don't want to round root 8 plus root 50, um, it, you don't want to just leave it as root 8 and root 50 because those two can both be bro broken down to something you can use. I invite you to try that, um, and if you want to continue to try the second one here, I will walk through the second one. It's a lot more complicated, but um, if you want to try the first one there, we can. Uh, it, you can pause the video and try it. A root eight breaks down to root four times root two, and root fifty breaks down to root twenty-five times root two. You can see we can start to skip some steps. Uh, two root two is is root eight, and five root two is is root fifty. And so together, if we had to add them together, we get 7 root 2. You might be like, well, that's just a coincidence because they both had root 2s, and that's absolutely correct. But if there are some root 2s and some root 3s and some root 5s, we can put those ones at least together. We'll see that in the next one. If this is kind of like algebra and we can only combine like terms, um, we can also multiply numbers together. The top ones, they're not actually, like, they can't actually go together because, uh, without taking the square root, because, like, this isn't three root sixes, it's three minus root six. This isn't two root twenty-four, it's two, two plus root twenty-four. Square root of twenty-four is, uh, could, could actually be broken down, but, um, we'll break it down after. Um, just to, we're just gonna keep it in this form for now. So if it's algebra, it's, it's kinda like multiplying binomials with the distributive law. We multiply 3 by 2 and get 6. And we can multiply 3 by root 24. So we just have 3 root 24s. Now we can multiply 2 by root 6 and get 2 root 6s. And we can multiply root 6 by root 24. And what, what happens is, like just like we broke down numbers, we can build them back up. We can multiply the square roots together. It becomes the square root of 144. In fractions, it's, it's more helpful to factor things. But... Uh, in, in radicals, like, because there's a potential that that number can be square rooted, and you can tell it, it can be, um, we actually want to build them up. And so we can just multiply 6 by 24 and get root 144. Um, root 24 actually breaks down to root 4 and root 6. I will use root 4 because, like, versus 8 or 12, because root 4, because 6 actually can't even be broken down any further. Um, if we use like root 8, root 3, root 8 can be broken up, but like, but like, so, um, it, it's going to take some more steps. Uh, what we're going to do is use the, a perfect square, so something like we can take the square root of, but, uh, the biggest perfect square as well. Uh, just subbing the root 24 back in, we get 6 plus 3 root 3 times 2 root 6, that's what t root 24 is. Oh, we did that line. And then just might as well take the square root of 144. If you can, take the square root of it. Um, the point of it is to get exact values, and the square root of 144 is exactly 12. Uh, if you have 2 root 6s and multiply that by 3, you get 6 root 6s. The root 6s can be put together, and the numbers can put, be put together, and you get the final answer of negative 6 plus 4 root 6. It's a little bit more complicated. It's just showing that you can take radical numbers and multiply them together. And often you don't get, it's not like you get four new numbers. Like you actually get um, something that's much more simple. Okay. A couple notes. Um, we end up combining like terms just like algebra. 
Uh, we do this to keep numbers in exact values. Uh, by exact, I don't mean like rounded decimal places. Exact is like in mixed radical form. And when breaking a radical down, the key question is to ask is, what is the biggest perfect square that is a factor of that number? Uh, so we've seen some like 25, uh, although uh, a 4, we saw 4 root 6. Um, what's the biggest perfect square that's a factor of that number? Okay, and that's basically it. And so you've got uh, some practice questions to try.